the video starts in 15 seconds. The video starts in 10 seconds. Video is starting in 5 seconds. Hi, this is Steve Harris, and I teach a lot of preparedness, and I got something awesome here for you to watch. But first, I want to tell you, if you press a button on your phone or your tablet and you get off of this video and you can't get back to it, you can go watch it right now at any time at freeprep1234.com. That's F-R-E-E-P-R-E-P-1234.com. I am going to cover everything you never heard of and did not know about disposable and rechargeable batteries for your preparedness. I'm talking alkaline, nickel metal hydride, lithium, lithium ion. That was lithium disposable, lithium ion rechargeable. Triple A, double A, C's, D's, 9 volts, CR123s, RCR1234s, 14500, 18650s, 26650s, and I am going to cover these in detail for you. This is a presentation that I gave to the Pittsburgh Preparedness Group. I recorded the screen and the audio in high quality so you can watch it, and it starts right now. Portable batteries, everything you never knew about batteries. This is going to be fun for you guys. Ask me questions anytime during the presentation. Just interrupt me, raise your hand, let me know if you got a question on something I am talking about. If you have a question, someone else probably also too has a question, but they don't want to ask. Every time you ask a question, you are going to get a ticket. At the end of the night, you're going to turn in all your tickets. Here, pass this around. At the end of the night, you're going to pass in your tickets, and we're going to draw tickets. And the ticket winner wins my favorite uh, Energizer headlamp. Brand new in the box, directly from Amazon. It's cool. It's the best $14 there is on a headlamp, period. I very, enjoy, very much enjoy the interactive format, so don't feel reserved. This presentation is about you learning, not about me giving it. I am recording the audio only and the screen of this presentation so others can learn from it later, other than the, so those of you who are here now. This class is a general overview. The full battery course is about eight plus hours to three days depending upon what version I'm giving to you, whether you're a military, Department of Defense, law enforcement, civilian. So what I'm going to show you here is a in-depth, detailed overview that you will be able to use tonight when you leave here for your own personal preparedness. Battery selection is crucial. Are you military going to a hot desert environment? What batteries like the heat? What batteries hate the cold? What batteries like the cold? These are all things you need to know, even from military all the way down to personal preparedness. Storage of batteries in case of an emergency, 5, 10, 20 years from now. If I'm teaching someone how to set up a safe, house, a safe room, a safe house, and you're a cool guy in a foreign country, and all of a sudden the bad guys get wind of you, and you've got to leave where you are and go to a safe, safe house, and you go to the drawer and you open it up and there's a satellite phone. What type of batteries do I have in there to power that satellite phone that will be working in 10 years from now? Lithium. Right. What type of lithium? You know, what configuration? What voltage? I mean, those are some of the things that other I've had to teach to other people that, you know, won't come into your mind. It's like, okay, that's a good question. What type of batteries would work good for that? This is something I am not going to teach you. Welcome, come in, sit down. I am not going to go into the half cell reactions of electrical chemistry parts of the battery. Do not worry about this. Throughout the presentation, I am going to be using units of charge called milliamp hours. That comes from the M, the A, and the H for milliamp hours. This will be a standard unit I will use through the whole presentation so you can gauge the difference between the batteries. So for example, if you had an old type of USB charger and it was a 500 milliamp charger and your iPhone battery was 1500 milliamp hours 
if you put 500 milliamps for three hours into that phone, you would have put in 1,500 milliamp hours. That assumes something we call a Q of one. That's the most technical thing you're going to hear tonight. That means for every electron I put into the battery, how many do I get out? Lithium ion batteries in your phone, you will get out 99.995% of what you put in. They are extremely efficient. Batteries, double A's, triple A's. I got triple A's here, I got double A's here. I don't have a C cell here. D cells, no nine volts. CR123 batteries here. 14500s, 18650s, 26650s, NICADs, nickel metal hydrides, non alkaline lithiums that are disposable and lithiums that are rechargeable. This is some of your choice of batteries, and I'm going to teach you all about these tonight. So batteries, things we can eliminate. Let's just get rid of the 9 volt batteries because they are basically only used in smoke detectors. And let's not talk about nickel cadmium because they were the rechargeable type of battery that came out before nickel metal hydride and they're dramatically inferior. The only thing that uses a nickel cadmium battery today is those little solar lights that go out into your garden. They have a little solar panel and a little LED light. They use nickel cadmium because they don't need to have any intelligence to charge it. It likes abuse. We're also not going to cover non-alkaline batteries, heavy-duty batteries, zinc carbon batteries. Most anything you're going to be buying today is going to be an, an alkaline or a lithium or a lithium-ion battery. You don't want anything else for your preparedness anyways. So AA batteries, starting off at the very beginning. These are the weakest battery we're going to talk about. It does have applications in a disaster in low-power devices like LED lights. It's not recommended as your go-to battery, despite this headlamp here, which runs on AAAs. Is it the best headlamp? No. Is it the best headlamp for $14? Hell yes. If you watch all the Alaska shows and keep an eye on what they got on their head, majority of people in uh, Life Below Zero and all the other Alaska shows, they'll be using an Energizer headlamp. It works really good. It's given Petzl a huge run for the money. You know, $45 for a Petzl or $15 for an Energizer. You know, they're basically doing the same thing. And they're both waterproof. It's a damn good, is it damn good, affordable, and durable? Hell yes. Do I carry one on a plane when I travel? Yes. Would I take one on a two-week trip to the Arctic or Antarctic? No. Is it incredible for around the house where you can recharge or around your car and other power sources? Yes. If, if this is my, my water storage, is this okay for my preparedness, for my water storage? Okay. This little bottle's too little water. What if I got four 55-gallon barrels of water that I can then go refill this up with? Is this a good, this just became a tool for my water storage. These the little AAA batteries in this headlamp might be low on power, but after what I teach you tonight, you are going to be see these batteries like this bottle of water. I can fill that bottle of water. I can recharge up these batteries anytime I so desire. And so if my kids want to leave the, the batteries on all night while they're sleeping, so to, who, who cares? You can charge them right back up the next day. Kids love these lights. It's a good thing to get them involved. Use them, give these things to kids as their toys. Let them play with it so when a disaster happens, they got their favorite light and they know how to use it and they're comfortable with it because they've been playing with it for a year. Double A and triple A batteries. Oh, going back to triple A's. I didn't put the I didn't put the uh, the weight in here on the batteries. One thing I forgot to do: lithium batteries, disposable energizer lithium batteries, are generally half the weight of nickel metal hydride and alkaline batteries. They are the lightest battery you're going to get. So, AAA and AA batteries. I should have said this. We have alkaline, nickel metal hydride, and lithium batteries. These are your basically your only three choices for a AA 1.2 to 1.5 volt battery. The nickel metal hydride is the end loop here. It is rechargeable. The alkaline battery is the Duracell battery here. The lithium is the Energizer lithium battery here. 
Question. How honest are the manufacturers about the amp power rating on the batteries? Damn honest. And if you go if you go on the web and read about uh, the ampere hour ratings, other people have tested them extensively, and they're pretty good. But ampere hour ratings is like this is one half liter of water. If this was a battery and I poured the water out slowly out of this, I'd get one half liter of water out of this bottle. If this was a battery and I poured the water out really quickly. I wouldn't get maybe half of the energy out of that battery. So a battery is not like a bottle of water. The more energy you draw from it, the quicker, the less efficient it is, the more you are going to lose. So while this lithium battery for 3,500 milliamp hours is rated at a 10 ohm load on a 1.7 volt battery for one hour a day, if you put those into a super bright 500 lumen flashlight, you might suck that thing down and it would be the equivalent of maybe a 2000 milliamp hour battery. You really got to match the battery with the application. You got to know that what your battery is going to do. Don't believe me, test it yourself. Put your batteries in your stuff, let it run and see how long it runs for and get to know it cold. You have to be able to repeat this stuff under stress. When there's a hole in the roof, there's a thunderstorm outside, the rain's coming in, the power's out, your sump pump, your basement's flooding, the kids are screaming, your wife's yelling at you, you need to know how long that damn battery's gonna last in your stuff. You gotta know that. So here's something interesting, this is about the most technical I'm gonna get. Can I ask a question for you? Sure, sure. Previously, one of the batteries are rechargeable. Yes. On that last one, you had three different ones. Was it just the one that's rechargeable? Okay. There's lithium and there's lithium ion. This Energizer silver and blue battery is a lithium battery. It's a primary battery. It's disposable. It's not a lithium ion rechargeable. The rechargeable is the nickel metal hydride end loop. Despite things you will read on the internet. For all practical purposes, there is no such thing as a rechargeable alkaline battery. There are some kernels of itty bitty kernels of truth that people try to blow up like popcorn and make you think that, that you can do a whole bunch of stuff. This battery works by metal leaving one side of the battery, going to the other side of the battery. It's not a reversible chemical reaction. So ignore anything you see about rechargeable alkalines. This end loop battery here, made by Panasonic, you can recharge about 15, sorry, 2100 times. It will die on its own after four, five, six years before you ever reach the end of its recharge life. Does that answer your question? Okay, question. Do I see a diminished capacity with the end loop nickel metal hydrides? Yes, as they get older, there will be a diminished capacity. I, I won't cover it here in this particular presentation. Maybe I'll add it into the next one. I have a way of you actually testing the batteries with a device to see how much capacity is in it. It will charge the battery, discharge the battery, measure how much it discharged it, and then recharge it back up for you and display how many milliamp hours it pulled out of it. So that is one way you will positively know whether your battery is good or bad and how good it is. After you've had your end loops for a couple years or a year or two, if you were military, I'd say use your end loops only for one year or less and then get new ones. For a civilian, I'd say use them for the first couple years in your primary stuff and then relegate them to your remote controls and save money there. So that's a really good application for it. But I will cover that next month about what to use to check your batteries. What was your question? I, I don't understand. I said the batteries will be ineffective, yet still be rechargeable. Is that what you're saying? It's going to be just like the bottle of water. It's going to, you're going to drink the water, and then you're going to fill it back up. Yes. So the nickel metal hydrides are your rechargeable battery. Yes. I, I don't need it there. So you said after five or six years, it's going to 
Okay. Yep. Uh, which is different than not being rechargeable. That, that means they're going to be dead. They have a they have a they have a they have a, they have a service life. Oh, you have five or six years within which to use the 2100 cycles. Right. Right. I see. Okay. That's a good question. Like the car battery, basically. Five years, four or five years. What was your question? Uh, with the rechargeable ones, is there a particular tester that you recommend? Or with the rechargeable batteries, is there a particular tester that I recommend? Yes, there is. I am going to cover it in the next presentation, but there's a tester from ZTS, a mini one and a large one like this. It is a computer controlled tester. It tugs on the battery and measures the current to tell you how much surface area is left active in the battery, which really tells you what, whether a battery is good or not. Any tester that has a little needle that tells you the voltage, throw it in the trash, run it over with the car, it's a piece of crap, it's going to give you a false sense of security, oh, my battery's good, 30 minutes later, why is my battery dead? <laughs> or your wife saying, honey, why is this not working? The things you do not want to hear, honey, why is this not working? So there, this is the only real way to test the battery capacity, do not ever rely upon anything that tells you the battery's capacity based upon its voltage, what's your question? Do you have any brands of batteries that you feel are superior? They're on the screen. Okay. Panasonic and Loop battery. Do I, the question was, do I have any type of batteries I feel are better than the others? Panasonic and Loop batteries, Duracell alkaline batteries, and Energizer lithiums. I do not like the alkaline batteries from the damn pink bunny. The Duracells outperform the pink bunny Energizer batteries pretty much they have for decades. So you can trust your health and your life and your safety to the Duracell alkaline batteries. The Panasonic end loops, as I will uh, show you later on, they are just bulletproof. You just love them. Now here's something that we all have to be concerned with. This is the only time I'm going to show you charts and graphs in this meeting. Your battery likes or doesn't like temperature to a significant amount. Let's show you the differences in temperature. Okay, here's my nickel metal hydride end loop battery down here, okay? Here is my Duracell alkaline battery here. Here we have the 10 degrees Celsius or the 50 degree Fahrenheit line here. Everyone see this? If you follow this over here, an alkaline battery that is at 50 degrees, which is what the temperature outside is today, it's going to have about, what, 80% of its service capacity. So if it was 100% full at room temperature, it's only 80% full just because it's at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The nickel metal hydride is going to be at 100% at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now at freezing temperatures, the alkaline battery is going to be down around 70% of its capacity from being at room temperature. And the nickel metal hydride is going to be at 80. And then at minus 14, everything with nickel metal hydride and, uh, sorry, 14 Fahrenheit, positive 14 Fahrenheit, everything goes down the toilet. Your alkaline battery is at 50%. Your nickel metal hydride is also about at 50%. So do you, do you kind of get through your head that when starts, things start getting below 50 degrees Fahrenheit that you're losing capacity in your batteries? And that when you start getting below freezing 32 Fahrenheit that you might want to keep those batteries in the internal pocket of your jacket? And that if you go out to your flashlight in your car in the middle of winter, you're going to wonder, you're, now you're going to know why it's not going to perform very good? Okay, keep this in mind here, especially this one, minus 20 Celsius, down to 20%, down to 25%. Keep this in mind, for I'm going to show you this slide. Here's a lithium battery performance, an Energizer disposable lithium. Okay, at freezing, 32 Fahrenheit, it's about 98% of its capacity. At minus 10, which is 14 Fahrenheit, that's still at 90%, 85% of its capacity. At minus 20 Celsius, minus 4 Fahrenheit, it's up here above 75%.
So if you got something you're going to leave in your car, or if you're going winter camping, or if you're going to go climb a rock, a mountain, obviously what type of battery are you going to want to be taking with you? The lithium batteries. Does that apply to lithium-ion rechargeable batteries as well? I will get into that when I get into lithium-ion batteries. Lithium-ion batteries are like no other battery you have ever been exposed to in your life. They're like no other animal. They're completely different, upside down thinking. That was uh, what your question? the old uh, grandma used to keep the batteries in the freezer. Negative. Yeah. Straight from, the, can, should you store your batteries in the refrigerator freezer? Straight from the head chemist at Duracell. The batteries are formulated for room temperature. Lower temperatures to most situations will deteriorate a battery quicker. High temperatures, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, will rapidly de deteriorate a battery. What is your question? I see you have the quantums up there. Are they better than the regular? Is there that much of a difference? The Duracell quantums, are they any different from the regular Duracells? No, they're just a new flavor on marketing. Okay, because I know they're a lot more expensive. A little bit, not much. Supposedly, they're not supposed to leak as much as a regular alkaline battery does. But the, I've not really found a difference in my testing on the quantums. In fact, it's, it's hard for me to find regular Duracell AA batteries at Costco or Sam's. It's, it's mostly, it's, it's only the quantum batteries that I'm seeing. Any other questions on alkaline nickel metal hydride or lithium batteries? Yes. Can any attack for any uh, red dot scope on a rifle? Do you recommend a lithium ion to be kept in there? In a, in, a, in, a, in a red dot scope on a gun, do I recommend a lithium battery being kept in there? What type of battery does it take? Uh, double A, Neotech, I'm thinking double A. The Neotech, double A, yes. If you are going to put batteries in something and you're going to want to go to it, you're going to want them to be double uh, the double A Energizer lithium batteries. They will not leak on you. Yeah. The, the nickel metal hydrides, I've only seen one leak in my entire life. Uh, they're not prone to leakage. Uh, I got some stuff I leave batteries in all the time. I got some stuff I leave the batteries in separate. I'll kind of show that later on in the presentation. Okay, any questions on the temperature performance of batteries? Good. So here's a brief summarization. Okay, remember nickel metal hydride are my rechargeables. Lithium primary are the Energizer lithiums. Alkaline are your standard Duracell or Energizer alkalines. Basically, the rechargeables are 1.2 volts versus 1.5 volts, so they're slightly lower in voltage. Not much stuff cares about that anymore. Discharge capacity, nickel metal hydrides will not last as long as lithiums. Nickel metal hydrides last longer in high drain devices like than alkalines. Nickel metal hydrides and lithium batteries. If you have a camera flash or you have a digital camera, something that draws a lot of power, nickel metal hydrides love to have high amounts of power pulled from them. Like I told you, I was emptying the water bottle. If you're pouring it out fast, you're not going to get the whole bottle out. If you're pouring it out slowly, you're going to get the whole bottle out of the battery. Nickel metal hydrides and lithiums love to be at high levels of discharge. Alkalines just go, ah, and they'll be dead you know, in half the amount of time. So recharge cycles, several, several hundred cycles for nickel metal hydride. Cheap nickel metal hydrides, generic ones, you can recharge about 500 times. The better ones, the Panasonic end loops, you can recharge up to 2,100 times. Um, you can't recharge a lithium disposable or an alkaline disposable battery at all. Uh, nickel metal hydride, this is self-discharge. Self-discharge means if I put the battery on the shelf at room temperature, how much energy is going to be left in it after a period of time? They will discharge energy on their own just sitting there in free space connected to nothing. They will begin a slow dying process. Nickel metal hydrides, there's two types of nickel metal hydrides. There's old ones and low self-discharge ones. The old ones would be dead in two to three months. Dead, zero, flat. 
The low self-discharge nickel metal hydrides in a year, they'll be at about 70 to 75%. So recharge your low self-discharge Panasonic and loop nickel metal hydrides at least once a year. Alkaline, here we go. Here's something. So I just said nickel metal hydride will be what? It'll be dead in either three months or it'll be at 70% in a year. Alkaline batteries will be at 80% in seven years. Sitting on the shelf at room temperature, that alkaline battery, you know what the date on the battery means? Use by date, dispose of date. That date means that battery stored at room temperature will be at between 80 and 85% of its original factory new condition in seven to eight years, or the date on that battery. So don't ever don't get rid of your batteries once they reach the date. You might put them in toys or relegate them to something else, but it does not mean they are dead. Lithium batteries like the Energizer Lithium, they will be at 80% of their factory new capacity in 15 to 20 years. That is a hell of a statement. That's a battery I can buy and put away. And when it's stored at room temperature, even with lithiums, they got wide temperature tolerances, you are going to know that that battery is going to be ready, willing to go for you when you need it. So that's something to take away from this. Lithium batteries are the lightest batteries there are. They're less than half the weight of nickel metal hydrides. Alkalines are a little lighter than nickel metal hydrides. And that's enough for a chart like that. So what do I do when I travel? I charge up all my nickel metal hydride and lithium ion batteries first before I leave. I have nickel metal hydride and lithium ion in everything. Me personally, I me personally, all the time, I have one AA flashlight that runs on a lithium ion 14500 or a AA. It's my EDC flashlight. Can anyone tell me what does EDC stand for? Okay, everyday carry. ADC stands for everyday carry. Too many of you put your hands up for me to give you tickets. Now, on me personally, when I fly, I got the one flashlight on me. Now, in my computer bag that I carry on, I have that Energizer headlamp I just showed you, which runs on three AAA batteries. And in it, I have nickel metal hydride batteries. In my computer case, I have six AA lithium batteries and four AA double-A uh, lithiums. And you know what? It's just easier for me to show you. So what do I do when I travel? I charge up all my batteries. Here's all my batteries. These are 18650s. This is a 14500. I'll tell you about these later. These are triple-A nickel metal hydrides, double-A nickel metal hydrides, more double-A nickel metal hydrides. They can come in. I'll tell you more about these cases that are just so awesome. They're called Power Packs cases. You can hold 12 double A's or 4 double A's or 6 triple A's or 12 triple A's in them, and they just protect everything. Yeah? You're talking about the nickel metal hydride batteries only lasting 50 to 80% after six months. Why wouldn't you buy all lithium batteries? You cannot recharge a lithium primary battery. You can recharge a lithium ion battery. The Energizer, uh, the regular Energizer lithium battery, you cannot recharge. Yeah, what's your question? I, I had uh, a battery charger to charge rechargeable batteries like 20 years ago. And the reason I didn't like it, it seemed like they never held a charge. I'm assuming in 20 years they've improved it. Slightly, yeah. They've improved the batteries slightly over 20 years. Have you improved over 20 years? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. You've improved over 20 years. So have the battery technology. That's why I got away from it. That battery charger you were using, you were using nickel cadmium batteries, which I started off saying we won't even talk about because they're so archaic. I just want to clarify for people that might not be aware of when you say primary batteries, those are disposable batteries. When I say primary batteries, I mean disposable batteries. When I say secondary batteries, I mean rechargeable batteries. So your Energizer Lithium is a primary battery. Your 14500 Lithium Ion is a secondary rechargeable battery. And I'll try to use disposable and and rechargeable in the presentation, but sometimes I slip back into my technical speak of primary and secondary. Thank you. Yeah, question. Primary and secondary mean 
is my primary go-to? No, nope. it means it's a totally separate term. It means primary means disposable, secondary means rechargeable. It doesn't mean one or the other. What was your question? When you say greater decay, if it's losing 20% in 15 years, is it going to lose an additional 20%? When I say the rate, when I say the rate of decay of a energizer lithium battery is it's going to lose 20% in 15 years, it will lose slightly more than that in this in the subsequent 20 years. It will be lose a lot more. I mean, the batteries have only been out for about 20 years. It's hard to have the curves on something. It's hard for me to give you curves, 40 years of battery discharge curves on a battery that's only been around for 20 years. There's accelerated testing and stuff, but that's a good question. Yes? I have a solar generator, which is it's all right, but I also have a regular generator. Now, can you talk to them? Do they make chargers? You can plug into your car. I will. I, I will cover. Uh, you have a solar generator and a regular generator for recharging. Is what you were asking. Yeah. Do you? Uh, there, I will cover chargers for this in detail in a little bit. And for your information, there's no such thing as a solar generator. It is a made-up term. To, it's a made-up term to separate you from your from, from your money. <laughs> I'm serious. It's a serious marketing gimmick to make you think, oh, I got a solar generator. I can power my house, my refrigerator. You know, they say you can power your refrigerator, and you look at the fine print, it'll power your refrigerator for 15 minutes. And it's, so, if you want to know how to. If you want to know how to make a solar generator and do it for one tenth the price that you purchased, I got the best stuff in the world to show you. What's your question? Oh, I was just going to ask the self-discharge curves on the on the Energizer lithiums. Um, are they trending linear or exponential? Are the self-discharge curves on the Energizer lithiums trending linear or exponential? I don't know. At the end of 15 years from now, invest another three dollars in some more lithium batteries. Fair enough. What's your question? Yeah, you said Duracell the best alkaline energy. Yep. You said Panasonic and loop you mean nickel metal hydride? Yeah, Panasonic and loops are nickel metal hydride. Those are the, the best nickel metal hydrides you okay. can bet your money on. Okay. And there are, everything I'm t showing you here is all on Amazon. Okay. Everything. Okay, so what do I do when I travel? Lithium ion, I have lithium ion or nickel metal hydride in everything. So the end loop nickel metal hydrides are in my headlamp. The end loop, actually the... The end loop double A's aren't in anything. The 14500 lithium ion batteries are in my double A flashlight. 14500 and, and a double A are the same size. I'll explain the numbers later on to you, but just think a double A and a 14500 are exactly the same size. This is an 18650. It's a much bigger battery. I charge that up before I go. Here's my everyday carry flashlight. This is on me personally. It takes one quote unquote double A flashlight battery. And here's the nickel metal, here's the lithium ion night core uh, 14500 lithium ion battery. Here's a Duracell alkaline battery. Here's a Panasonic N loop nickel metal hydride battery. Here's an Energizer lithium throwaway battery. Any of these batteries will work in this flashlight. So while I'm going out the door with a really great lithium-ion battery, if I'm in a situation and I have a disaster happen or I get stranded someplace, if I find anything else that's a double A, it can go into my flashlight and I can use it. I'll cover this later, but we call this energy harvesting. So what else do I carry? On my carry-on bag, in my computer bag, which is my computer bag right here, I carry this on the airplane. In it, I carry this. I carry an Energizer 3 double AAA headlamp. And it's the same one that we're giving away here tonight. So my nickel metal hydrides are in here. Now, why would I go out the door with nickel metal hydrides in my headlamp when we know that the Energizer lithiums are so much superior? Why? Because they only last for six months, so you want to use them first. Because they only last for six months, I want to use them first. No. 
You can recharge them at the hotel. I can recharge them at the, here, give them the ticket. You can recharge them at the hotel. Nope, that's not the answer. Pete, what's your question? These are lithium disposables. Why would I go out the door with nickel metal hydrides in my in my flashlight rather than having lithiums as the backup? Do you not have a Those aren't lithium ion rechargeable. Those are lithium disposable. What I'm saying is you said why you want the nickel metal hydrides because you can recharge those. Right, but why would I go out the door with some a battery that's slightly not as good? I thought you had a, a setup where you could hook up to that headgear to a computer and charge the battery. No, I never said I had a hookup going to my computer. I never said that. What's your question? It's a matter of confidence. You said the first thing you do is charge all your batteries before you... That go. is it. In fact, for the correct answer, you get three tickets. <laughs> The correct answer is it's a level of confidence I have in these batteries. Now, I guarantee you that these Energizer lithium batteries might only have a failure of one in a million. But it's like this bottle of water. If I fill this bottle of water up before I leave, how confident am I that I'm going to get all the water out of it? Do I know the bottle will stay together? Do I know it will hold water? Do I know I can drink it all? I've been using these end loop nickel metal hydrides in the headlamp over and over and over and over. And they work and they work and they work, so I know with what I'm going out with is going to work. And if I get stuck someplace, like in an airport, and I drain my nickel metal hydride end loops, I get to have, I'm now carrying the lightest, most energy batteries with me, the Energizer lithiums that I can then use in the headlamp. Does that make sense? Question? Yeah, why do you have your end loops numbered? Oh, why is there a number four? Because they're the fourth generation end loop. Uh, I got so many of them, I need to know which ones are the third generation, which ones are the fourth generation, et cetera. So you wouldn't want to like number them so you know, oh, I bought these ones. I put dates on them now. Okay. I put 2016, 2015. What was your question? So why wouldn't you just have all the best because I am carrying this on the plane, or I might be a backpacker, I might be a hiker. You might have a small bug out bag. And while I know these end loop batteries are going to work for me the first time, every time I know how long they're going to last for, the lithium batteries are half the weight of the end loops. And they also have about a good 150% more energy, 1.5 times more energy in them than the end loops do. So I'm going out when I, you know, when the, it's like, you're in the airport, the power fails, shit. Okay, I reach into my everyday carry flashlight, I pull it out, I go into my computer bag, and I pull out my headlamp because I have to do something, put the headlamp on my head. When I click that on button, I want to know that that headlamp is going to work the first time every time. And I'm going to do that with the nickel metal hydrides. If some other people listening to this presentation disagree and want to go out with the lithium recharge or with the lithium disposable batteries in your headlamp for the first time every time, I cannot fault that philosophy either. I'm just giving you a few options of a few mentalities and ways of thinking and looking at things so you can make a decision on your own on what you might want to use for yourself personally. Does that make sense? How many batteries do you carry through TSA? <laughs> How many batteries do I carry through TSA? <laughs> How many batteries do I carry through TSA? I'm going to show you how many batteries I carry through TSA. And when they ask you, sir, do you have any lithium batteries with you? My answer is no. <laughs> because they're worried about loose lithium ion batteries. Lithium ions, I said, are like no other batteries you'll ever run into. You screw up a lithium ion battery, you crush it, you short it, you're looking at a flamethrower. I'm not kidding. A flamethrower is shooting inch-long flames out of the thing and going shh. 
that's why they don't like, they actually don't like them in your check-in. They want you to carry them on the airplane because if something happens, they can put the fire out in the cabin. If a fire happens in the, in the undercarriage below, they can't really get to it very quickly. So they are concerned with lithium ion batteries. Now, my laptop has a lithium ion battery. It has the same batteries in it that's in my 18650 flashlight. Do they ask you, sir, does your laptop have a lithium ion battery in it? Of course it does, they all do, but they're engineered and protected and all put together in a protective case so they won't get bumped, banged, or shorted. If I'm carrying my lithium and lithium ion batteries in these all plastic power packs holders, is something going to happen to them? No. You're right, nothing's going to happen to them. So does the ditzy broad behind the computer terminal really need an explanation that my lithium batteries are in all plastic containers? No. What they don't know won't hurt me. <laughs> well, so, okay, now, this is in my check-in stuff. This is what's in my suitcase. I have another Energizer 3 AAA headlamp because I like them. Okay, so two is one, one is none. I have two of them. To go along with this and the one in my computer bag, I got six AAA nickel metal hydrides in a power packs container. Now, I want to have some more redundancy, so just for the heck of it, I got a Maglite flashlight that runs off of three AAA batteries as well. What happens if I want a flashlight or my headlamp, or I lose a headlamp, the um, Maglite flashlight small and durable, and I know it'll work. I also carry with me Double A's are by far better than triple A's. As I told you, the, 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 the triple A batteries are going to be the weakest battery you're going to be carrying, and you don't really want to super rely upon them. So when I travel, I carry double A's. And whether the triple A's are nice for convenience, and I got some backup to them, I'm really depending upon double A's. So I got a headlamp that runs on one double A battery. It's from Phoenix or Phoenix. And I have, a, to, for redundancy, I got another little flashlight over here that runs off of two AA batteries. And I have my wonderful, famous, God I love it, Nightcore flashlight with an 18650 battery in it. The, 18, the way things are going in the world, alkaline batteries in five, ten years, ten years plus from now, you're not going to be seeing them. You're going to be using lithium ion batteries. Okay? Keep in mind, D-cell batteries go all the way back to the early 1900s. So, you know, things are changing in the battery world, finally. And I carry two extra 18650s with me. Any questions on this? Yeah, which light core uh, flashlight is that? <sighs> no, I don't, but I carry it when I'm on duty with law enforcement, and it's got an adjustable ring on it. No, it's not that it's, one. It's the bigger. It's that's the, the, that's, the, uh, that's the MT-10A. This is the SRT3. SRT3? Okay. I think it's SRT7 or 5. Yeah, this is the SRT7 or 5. It's on prep123.com. P-R-E-P-1234.com. All of the nickel, uh, 18650 stuff is up there. So whether I could live and travel nicely in the double A's and the triple A's, since the 18650s are just coming into dominance now, they've been around for 15, 20 years, but they're really in mass manufacturer dominance now. So I am carrying them with me and using them on a regular basis to gain more experience with them so I can recommend or not recommend something to you based upon my experience. Any questions on this slide? Go ahead. Uh, you did mention my core batteries. Where are they at? I am going to, where are the Nightcore batteries with other 18650s? I am going to cover 18650 batteries, the brands and the security and the safety of them in detail in when I hit lithium ion batteries. But that's a good question. So, what do I do when I travel? Why do I carry so many rechargeable batteries with me? Yes? No, I said, why do I carry so many rechargeable batteries with me? Because you can recharge them whenever you want. Because I can recharge them whenever I want. That's a correct answer. You get multiple tickets. 
That's the answer. I have a little charger here. It's, it's called the XTAR VC2 Plus charger. And here you can see, here's my USB charger. This is a whole nother presentation just on phones, okay? I have a video on, on energy1234.com that you can email me and say you want it for free. The video is almost four hours on nothing but keeping your phone charged all the time, any way in the world, by about 14 different methods. So whereas I got a USB charger here for the wall and a USB charger for the car, this AA, this charger here recharges AAA, AA, 14500, 18650, 26650. So it recharges all the nickel metal hydride, it charges all the lithium ion batteries, and it plugs into the same thing I'm recharging my phone off of, and that is a USB charger. That is why I'm carrying so many rechargeable batteries with me because I can harvest power wherever I'm at. I can use the power from the wall. I can use the power from a cigarette lighter. Anyone recognize this, this adapter here? This is an adapter that clamps onto the battery of a vehicle and gives you a cigarette lighter plug on the end. So I can go and pop the hood of any vehicle, clamp on and plug in and recharge, <laughs> recharge underneath my own control at my will. So that's why I'm carrying rechargeables is because I can top them off and replenish them as I so desire. This allows me to harvest power from other places, devices, people, places, and things. So here's one of the other little off subject. But if I take this VC2 Plus XTAR charger and I put into it an 18650 battery, I plug my phone into it, I'm not recharging the battery off the phone. I'm charging the battery off the phone off of the battery. So the same thing that recharges my batteries, and I'm carrying 18650s for my flashlight and for my headlamp, I can now, for the same $25 charger, I, it's a backup to recharge my phone. Is that cool or what? It gives me redundancy, and I'll get to redundancy shortly. So the USB charger can charge lithium ions and nickel metal hydrides, and the 18650s can charge my phone. Okay, here is some of the meat of the phone, the fun stuff. Double A batteries versus triple A batteries versus double A's versus C's versus D cell batteries. Here's the thing that you're going to want to keep in mind the most. A triple A battery is 1250 milliamp hours in capacity. A AA battery is basically double of a AAA battery. It's about 2,500 milliamp hours in capacity. C cells, not used much anymore, are three times the size of a AA. A D cell alkaline battery is seven and a half times the size of a AA. It's 16,000 milliamp hours or plus of energy. You know, and to that, I just have to go, wow, that is a lot of power. So if you're contrasting 2,500 versus 16,000, and I have a sleeve of D-cell batteries here in this picture, and I have 14 D-cell batteries, how much power do I really have? I got a lot. This sleeve costs 15 bucks. That's a lot of power there. So what good is this? You know, here's my emergency drawer at home. It sits underneath the TV. In here, I got two flashlights, a lantern, and a radio. And here is, so when the power fails, this is where I go first. I go to this drawer when the power fails. So this is my be all, end all? No, but this is where, when the power fails, I'm gonna go to first to get my light that's gonna take me to something else. What's your question? How about those uh, flashlights that plug into the wall where they automatically turn on when the power goes out? How well are, are those reliable? Those are, how good are the flashlights that plug into the wall that turn on when the power fails? They are a convenience novelty only. You're not going to bet your health, your safety, or your life to them. However, if they give you four hours worth of light when the power fails, and you got one in the bathroom, one in the living room, one in the hallway, one in each of every bedroom, that is going to be a big convenience to you. That way you'll be able to see going to your... Yeah, well, I mean, usually I'm yeah. sitting in front of the TV or something when the power fails, so... 
right. yeah, but you're right. An automatic light like that would allow me to find the drawer, but I can find the drawer on my hands and knees. How do I know? I've done it. <laughs> Practice, people. There's three things. Does it work? Do I need it? Can I repeat it under stress? Those are three things everything must pass in order, and that's what you should be able to do with your preparedness. You should be able to find your emergency drawer in the dark. What's your question? Why wouldn't you carry a flashlight on your side? Why, why wouldn't I carry a D-cell flashlight on my side? I do. Every day. I showed you my everyday carry flashlight. Right here. Yeah. Well, then why do you need to go to the drawer? Well, I, I, well I, why do I need to have the drawer? Okay, well, one, I can find the drawer with this flashlight, okay? This is holding one AA battery. What did I show you back here? What's the size difference between a AA battery and a D-cell battery? The D-cell battery has six, seven and a half times the energy of a AA. Okay? When, you, when, when the power fails and a tree falls through the roof and the kids are screaming, you need to find out what the hell's going on. You need to go outside in the rain, see how big the hole is, get the tarp, start to cover it. <coughs> Do you really want to worry about that your flashlight from your pocket with a AA battery is only going to last an hour? No, you're not. You're going to want to know that your battery is going to last for 40 hours. That's why you got the, the D cell batteries in the flashlight in the drawer. Does that make sense? So when the power fails, this is where I go. Everything is D cell. Here's a close up of the drawer. I have two sleeves of Duracell D cell batteries in here. I got the, the AM FM radio that runs off of D cells, two flashlights, and one lantern in the drawer. So I have D cells in the radio, okay? I got three tickets for anyone who can tell me something about this picture that they might not think is correct. You don't get a ticket for answer, answer. you only get three tickets for the right answer. What's, you raise your hand first. The Energizer. Well, right, they're energizers. But I got the energizers in there because that's all I had available to me when I bought them. I didn't have a Costco subscription. So I couldn't. Why do you? What's wrong with the picture? That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> what's wrong with the picture? It looks like the battery on the right is reversed. No, the battery's not reversed. What's your question? Not lithium. No, nope. there are no lithium D cell batteries. There are no lithium ion. There are no lithium disposable uh, D cell batteries. There's no battery cover. The, the battery cover's <laughs> off, so I can show you the batteries. <laughs> we'll get a ticket for that. Well, okay, what's that? What do you think? That's what I was going to say. What do, you, what do you think? Is it maybe off? DC 9 volt? No. Am I reading that wrong? I have no idea. He's looking. What's your idea? It's not a crank radio. Crank radios are the biggest piece of junk. <laughs> a crank radio is best found underneath the rear tire of your car as you've gone over it. Or downrange. Nothing will, or downrange. Nothing will let you down faster and quicker than a crank radio. I have an entire answer on a survival podcast I can send you about crank up stuff. I, I see a place where you can plug in a charger. No, it's no. Well, it has an exterior antenna. No, uh, what's wrong with the picture with the batteries? Yes, Vanessa. Is the battery on the right different? Nope, they're the same. The wrong side okay, you all fail. Is it because you keep them in there? Uh, nope. Well, I told you I'll cover that. There, I do keep them in here. I've not had a leak in these because I want to be able to open it and use it real quickly without having to put the batteries in it. I've not had a leak in these. I have leaks in other batteries, but this drawer, they stay in it because I need to open the drawer and use them right, real, right away. So you didn't notice something. How about this? Does it show you a little better? What, uh, what's wrong with this picture? There's an expiration date on the battery of 2014, and I'm giving you this presentation in 2016. So, three days ago. That's a problem. What did I tell you about the date? What did I tell you about the date on the battery? At the date on the battery at room temperature, how much is left in the battery? 80% of the battery. So are these batteries technically pretty good? So if this radio will play for two months, 24/7 on low volume, and I'm at 80%, 
you know, and so it's going to play for 60 days. 80% of 60 days is what, Pete? You know, about a month and a half. About a month and a half. So is a month and a half pretty darn good? Yeah. Okay, good. So D cells and a flashlight. These will run for 30 to 40 hours in a good uh, uh, mag light flashlight or an energizer hard case flashlight. And this is not something off the website. I measured this number before I came here and told you this. Okay. Stuff I'm giving you is not just something I am re-vomiting from something I ate on the web. This is stuff that I have researched and done for you. Why do I have two completely, totally different LED flashlights? Three tickets. What's the um, the, the part of, part, important part of having a redundancy is that they're different um, so that if one fails, you have one that's Redundancy and different. If there was a common failure with the mag light flashlight, I go out, I pull out one mag light flashlight, it doesn't work, I go, crap. I pull out the second one and it doesn't work, I go, crap. You know, what am I doing? So I got two completely different ones for the difference in redundancy purposes. What's your question? You said the D-cell are not rechargeable? Uh, there are rechargeable D-cell batteries, and I will cover them, but these are not. What did I say? At the end of a low self-discharge rechargeable battery is about how many percent after a year? 70. 70. That's about 70 percent after a year. The D cell alkaline batteries or any alkaline battery is about what percent after eight years? 80%. Okay? So I don't keep nickel metal hydrides and stuff that I'm going to store away. Now, D cells in a flashlight. These are the D cells from the flashlight. What do you see about these? They're dated 2012. Now, what. If I got D cell batteries in my flashlight that are dated from 2012, what do these really tell me? No, they're not how many percent is left in them. What does this really tell you about me having batteries in something that are dated 2012? You're not staying up to date. No, I'm not staying up to date. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm proving to you that out-of-date batteries work just fine. Trusting, you're trusting. You're nope. Pete, what? You've been doing this since 2005 at least. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, you get three tickets that are up here. It's 2016. I got batteries dated 2012. That This emergency drawer I told you, I made it in 2004, 2005. I've been doing this for a while, okay? I've been practicing what I preach, and I'm preaching to you what I practice, <laughs> okay? So go ahead and make one of these and put it away and put the right batteries in it. You won't need to worry about it. But that's the takeaway from this. Those have been there since 2004. Now here is the, the battery aisle at Walmart up in Cranberry. I took the photo prior to Superstorm Sandy. <laughs> Remember I said I've been doing this since 2004. Here's the you know, Superstorm Sandy's coming. Are you getting any batteries out of here? No. So what do you think of my expired out-of-date batteries now? They're pretty, they're pretty damn good to have when your choice is no battery. Uh, I have this LED lantern in there. It runs on 3D cells. A friend of mine by the name of Harlan Meeks, he has three of these, one for each of his kids starting at age two, three, and five. They've played with them for the last three years, and they are still working. They are child indestructible. So if they can handle a child, they can handle me sometimes. I don't have a question on the comment. I have a regular uh, camping battery or uh, light like that. Yeah. It's one of those rectangular six-volt batteries. Yeah, okay. It's been in there 12 years and it still works. Now I'm going to go home and see what time it is. Right. You get, the question was, he's got a camping battery, a six-volt battery, and a lantern. It's been in there for 12 years, still works. But, you know, still works, but the question is, how long does it work for after 12 years? We talked about being it's stored at... It's got two fluorescent bulbs. Yeah. One on, two on, and it still works bright. Still works. So we'll leave it on all night and let me know how long it works for. <laughs> eight years. One thing to leave something in storage for eight years is another thing for 12, 15 years. Pete. Uh, I was a physics teacher for 16 years in high school, and for a lot of our electronics experiments, I said, hey, I'm going to get these lantern batteries because I'm tired of every year having to replace our C&D batteries. 
Biggest mistake I ever made. Lantern batteries are full of double A batteries. That's what's inside of them is double A batteries. Okay, 3D cells in there, 24, 240 lumens of light. It'll run for 40 hours. Low setting is 100 lumens. This is what I call enough light. The, 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 the two off is like, I got a flashlight, it's 1,000 lumens. It makes you think Jesus is coming back. It's so darn bright. <laughs> Do you need that to find your way around the house and go feed the cat? No. You, you need what's the right amount of light for something. If you're searching outside for a lost child, you need 1,000 lumens. If you're doing anything around your house, 100 lumens is by far more than enough. As I said, this one is indestructible. Now, you guys asked me about rechargeable D-cell batteries, okay? <laughs> there are D-cell nickel metal hydride batteries. They do not work in a AA charger. You've got to have a D-cell nickel metal hydride charger for them. The D-cell nickel metal hydrides, as my previous chart shows, they're 8,000 milliamp hours versus 16,000 milliamp hours for an alkaline. So your D-cell rechargeables are half the energy of your alkaline. Is this good for me in, in preparedness? Is this acceptable? My, my bottle of water example. It might be half the energy of an alkaline, but I can refill my bottle. I can refill that battery anytime I want. Is it fair to say that's the higher rate discharge in those versus the end loop, for example? The, you know, that's a comp the, is, there, is the rating, uh, the self discharge rate between the D cells and the double A's will be the same. What I mean is that the 50% in a year versus. There'll be the, the, these. The, I, will, I will cover that in a second. Very good question. It requires a separate charger. Yes. Uh, if I have one of those chargers at home, can I keep batteries in there and just kind of walk away and forget about it? Can you, keep, can you keep batteries in your charger and leave them in there? Yes, the answer is you can leave them in there. The new smart chargers will trickle charge the batteries. They won't hurt the batteries. You can leave them in there as long as you, you, des you desire. Tenergy has the best brand of nickel metal hydride D-cell batteries, but I'm about to show you. Okay, also don't forget it could take 8 to 24 hours for these things to charge because they're big. They're not a double-A battery. They're going to be four times, three, four times the size. And they can hold about 500 plus charges, so that means you can get a lot out of them. So now, here's your question about the batteries discharging on their own. What was your, what's your question? What is the effective life uh, then of the D-cells? What's the effective life of the D-cells? Same as a regular nickel metal hydride, four to five years. So not all nickel metal hydride batteries are the same. Are created equal. This goes for double A's and for D cells and for C cells and triple A's. There are LSD. It's not the drug. <laughs> LSD stands for low self discharge. Okay. So I'm telling you that after a year, they got a good 70% of their energy left in them, which is the only nickel metal hydride you want. Here, right from Amazon, is two Tenergy D cell, low self discharge. It says it right there nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries, 8,000 milliamp hours. And they're 16 bucks for two of them. And you look right below it and you see, oh, I can get the EBL four pack D cell that are 10,000 milliamp hours, and they're only 25 bucks. Which one are you more inclined to buy? You might be enticed and encouraged by buying the bigger one, but it's not a low self-discharge battery. And two to three months, it is going to be dead. Not dead out of its life, but needing a full charge. So when you're on Amazon and you're looking for stuff, make sure you're looking for them to say either low self-discharge or pre-charged. Okay, they got to say that. And all of the Panasonic N loops will be that way, even if they don't say it. You can trust them completely. So, so keep an eye out for this. You're saying all the pre charged are LSDs? All the pre charged batteries are LSDs. That is correct. Or anything that is like pre charged, ready to go, you know, charged and ready to use, anything like that is going to be, because otherwise, by the time they made them and got them to the store, they'd be dead. 
Double A and nickel metal hydride, low self-discharge batteries. This is the Panasonic N loop batteries from Amazon. The PowerX eight slot, two hour battery charger. This is bulletproof. I have had this on, from people on, on the Survival Podcast over and over and over. You can bet your health, your life, and your safety to this battery and to this charger, okay? It will charge up eight batteries from dead to full in two hours. There is a one hour version, but the wall wart's about this big. Two hours to recharge eight batteries is fast enough, and this one is more inexpensive. It'll recharge triple A's and double A's. And this is what you are looking for. You will, you, especially if you got kids and toys and stuff, you, the charger itself is like around 50 bucks. The end loop batteries are like four for 12 or eight for 12. You will save so much money on batteries with these. You get money back quickly, especially with kids. The combination is bulletproof. Redundancy. I've been mentioning a few things to you. Two is one, one is none. How many of you heard me say this or heard you know, said before? Does that mean I should have two of everything? Yeah. If you can. If I can. If you can forward <laughs> it. Yeah, there you go. Pete. Things that you need to, to rely your life upon. Think, one, one is none. That means if one fails, you better have a backup. Right. If you have two of something and one fails, you got one. If you got one of something and it fails, you got none. Here's a good example. A Bic lighter. Is it a good fire starter? Okay. You go ask a Navy SEAL, what does he carry for to start fires? He'll tell you a Bic lighter. And I've asked that question. Now, if you go into the water and you come out of the water and you're soaking wet, will a Bic lighter work? No, it won't work. So what if I have a magnesium fire starter with a ferro-seranium rod on it and the magnesium to start a fire like they do on Survivor? Will that work if I walk out of the water? Could I start my cigarette off of a magnesium fire starter if I really wanted to have a smoke really bad? Yes, I could. Would it be more, con was the BIC more convenient? Yes. What I have is I have two completely divergent methods of starting a fire. I got the simple and easy Bic lighter, and I got the magnesium ferro-seranium rod that can do it in all sorts of really bad conditions. That is what I mean by two is one, one is none. I don't mean have two Bic lighters. You get into a thunderstorm, you got two Bic lighters on you, you got two lighters that aren't working. Now, two is one, one is none could mean one big lighter that's in a vacuum sealed bag and one that's not in a vacuum sealed bag. Now, one is waterproof, one's not waterproof. That might be your two is one, one is none. Three is for me or a guarantee. Four is even more. Five means I make a home alive. Six is a good mix. Seven is heaven. It goes up to ten. I just, <laughs> I just forgot what eight was. So... Sometimes for redundancy, you might not have two methods or one method. You might have three or four methods that are completely different. An example for this is three is for me. If I want to recharge my AA batteries, I got the PowerX charger here, which I told you is the number one way of doing it. The D-cell uh, rechar battery charger will take AA and AAA batteries. So if this fails, I can use this. And I showed you I got the pocket uh, two-slot charger that I take when I travel with me. So here I have three different ways of recharging my AA, AAA batteries that I'm so reliant upon in my, in my preparedness. Does it make sense by how I'm getting, you know, two is one, one is none, three is for me? I'm buying things that do different things, and, you know, the, the, each one does something better than the other, but each one can do the other one just as good. This one might take, you know, seven hours. This will take seven hours. The small one will take seven hours to recharge a AA. The Power X will take, you know, two hours to recharge it. Question? What's your opinion on some of those, um, they have the power packs for the cell phones and so forth? Uh, those are going to be lithium ion batteries, and those are an entire class on just on cell phones alone. And Pete, Pete's nodding his head because he's watched my video, and the video is three hours and 45 minutes just on cell phones. And that covers for you being anywhere in the world. But it's still good for, I got people in the USA going, 
<laughs> he goes, I just got on a five-hour flight, landed and got stuck on, uh, on the tarmac for eight hours. I ran my phone and my tablet for the whole time. Everyone else had a dead, dead battery. God, Steve Harris, I love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know? I, I get emails like that. I go, oh, gee, I wonder why I do this, you know, occasionally. Question. Yeah, I have a car. I have one of those. I probably get two more complete charges. Yeah, I will cover, I will cover those when I do cell phones. What's your question? Just on the redundancy issue with two separate methods. Yep. Uh, what about the, for a more complex item, uh, parts interchangeability? No, what's uh, for redundancy? What about parts interchangeability? That's a good question. Everything is basically sealed and not to be touched by you. I have a very high electronics background. It's what all my education was for. It's what I loved to do uh, in my teenagehood and you know, child. I played with electronics. I would not go in and fix any of these battery chargers. If one broke, I would throw it away and buy a new one. Question. Knowing when to cut off, most of them. The question is on charging of the batteries. How do they charge it? Is it based upon internal resistance or is it based upon other methods? That is an hour-long discussion that is outside the purview of this presentation. For the pr purpose of the presentation, put it in, plug it in. When it says it's fully charged, take it out and use it. Question. So my battery charger is 20 years old. It does. Double A's, D's and D's, probably throw it away. Your battery charger is 20 years old, throw it away because it's nickel cadmium only. Okay. And you can't hardly even find a nickel cadmium battery anymore. A nickel cadmium has one fifth of the energy of nickel metal hydride. Do you really want to use something that has 500 milliamp hours versus 2,500 milliamp hours? No. So. Uh, contact Henry Ford Museum or any of the other electronics <laughs> places. Some place might want it, you know, to say this is, you know, something that people were using at Y2K. <laughs> What's your question? The little um, battery, the rechargers that came, like with the power block, or you can get them at the $5 store. What's your opinion on that? Uh, what's my opinion of the inexpensive small uh, rechargeable battery power chargers, especially the ones from China? How good is your fire insurance? Okay. Uh, when it comes to lithium ions, I said that they are literally a blowtorch when they go wrong. Alkaline nickel metal hydride aren't. When you treat a lithium ion wrong by overcharging it, it can explode, it can catch on fire, it can shoot flame out, catch the charger on fire. I have articles on my website of houses that have been burned down from lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries. Is that like the scooters? Yeah. Scooter, yeah, the scooters. The scooters, the electric scooters around Christmas time had a problem with recharging batteries and catching fire. Don't go cheap on your battery chargers. You know, get as anything. The, mo the cheapest thing is generally the highest quality, near most expensive thing because you only have to get it once and it'll last you for 20 years. Unless your battery has become out of date, then it won't last you. What's your question? So when it comes to the lithium ion batteries that are in like the hoverboards and uh, e-cigarettes in particular, where does that problem come from? Does it come from having cheap, poorly designed batteries that are discharged beyond their capacity or they're charged wrong? What, what kind of thing? The, the, you the problem you're asking about what goes wrong with lithium ion batteries, what makes them catch on fire, is it the cell or is it the charger? I'll cover that in the lithium ion section. It's a little bit of both. If the battery had the right amount of protection in it, it wouldn't go bad, no matter how bad the charger is. So when you get batteries without protection and you get dumb chargers, you got a recipe for disaster. So dumb batteries and smart chargers are okay? Actually, I, I, I do have some dumb batteries and I have the Nightcore smart charger. Everything I, I have here, it will be on the table up front for you to see. And I got stuff here from the lithium ion presentation. You really, really need to see the lithium ion presentation to really go into that. And then it'll make a lot more sense. Question. I'll just pay you back on that. I was going to ask you about the uh, 18650 uh, circuit protection. Hell yes. Do I recommend the 18650 circuit protection? There's three forms of protection in the 18650. I'll cover all three in the lithium ion section. Now the, the next section on batteries, CR1234. Sorry, CR123s. RCR123s. 
16 340s, 14 500s, 18 650s, 26 650s. There's the next section on lithium ion rechargeable batteries. As I said, these are like no battery that you are familiar with in the least. I've already exhausted all my time just doing double A and triple A nickel metal hydride and alkaline batteries. There wasn't enough time for me in the presentation to put this. So next month we will cover lithium ion batteries. Hi, this is Steve Harris again. Thank you for watching my presentation. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry I did not have enough time at the Pittsburgh Preparedness Group to talk about 16340s, RCR123s, CR123s, 14500s, 18650s, and 2650 batteries, and more. These are very important batteries to your preparedness. These lithium-ion batteries that I'm going to be talking about are going to take over and replace most batteries that you know of and use today. Five, ten years from now, it'll be a completely different world of what you are using in terms of batteries, and it is for the better. The class on the lithiums is not done yet. I have not given it. So if you would like to be notified immediately when this class is available for you to watch, for nothing, for free of course, please click the learn more or the sign up button on Facebook or if you're on freeprep1234.com please enter your email address and we respect your privacy we're not going to spam you we're not going to sell your email address or anything else you are ours and we will notify you when we got some of the best stuff available on preparedness for your personal education thank you again thank you for letting me be a part of your education and your curriculum and i hope this helps your wonderful journey through preparedness and it helps you be better prepared uh just helps you be better prepared for when stuff gets thrown at you so you and your family can be a spectator and enjoy the event rather than being a participant and being cold wet and miserable thank you